the third week, on the first week, Jez spoke about the call, the cost, and the commission. Nod your heads if you remember. So the call, the cost, and the commission. So the call, it doesn't matter who we are. Amen. There's an invitation for everybody to be called by Jesus. Amen. The cost, about giving everything up to follow him. Amen. And then the commission, about our journey and our destination and where we're going with Jesus. And then last week, whoever was privileged enough to hear the wonderful Caleb speak, um, I watched him back in the week and it was fantastic. And he was focusing more on the cost and he did that wonderful illustration, didn't he? When, when Stuart was holding all this money and he had this check uh, and Jesus had given us unlimited resources and Stuart couldn't quite take the check because he had all this money in his hands, but he was basically enforcing the fact that it's going to cost us everything, guys, but we're left with more than we could ever imagine. Amen. Yeah, we're not left with nothing. Amen. So today I'm going to speak to you on um, something I really believe is going to bless you today and encourage you today and that is the, this question is who are we becoming so whether that's who are we as in corporate we who are you becoming as an individual person but god really just pressed on me today let's reflect like who are we becoming who we follow determines who we become and jess said that on the first week but who we follow and what we follow will ultimately determine what we become and how we become that. So I want you to just put your hand up if you have any form of social media. So that could be messaging, WhatsApp, anything. Just pop your hand up any form of social media. Okay, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Right, keep your hands raised if you have a Facebook account. So if you don't, you can put it down, that's fine. Okay, keep your hands raised if you have an Instagram account. Ooh, okay. Keep your hands raised if you have a TikTok account. Oh, <laughs> shows the generation we're in, guys. It's all about TikTok now, apparently, guys. So, right, you shot me. I thought you'd have a you'd have a TikTok account. <laughs> but even just in this room, as we sample the people in this room, you will realise. We go on to the next slide, Stu. You know, Instagram, Facebook. It's all about the what the the likes, the following, isn't it? Yeah. So I have a photography business and a lot of the work I do is all to do with your following, yeah? So the top photographers, they'll have like 100,000 followers and, and there's me with my like 800 and something. And in this world, it's all about, isn't it? If the more followers, followers you have, the more influence you have, the more popular you are, the more loved you are. Let's be honest, how many of you have posted a social media post on Facebook, whatever, and three minutes later, you're checking back, oh, how many likes have I got? <laughs> oh, oh, gosh, i got 24 comments, you know? I do. We're terrible for doing that, aren't we? Like, we're terrible. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Um, but do you know what? It's not all about that, is it? And Mark Zuckerberg, who obviously created Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of thing, you know, he did not create followers, did he? Jesus said, follow me long before Mark Zuckerberg did, oh, yes. you know? And I'd much prefer to be a follower of Jesus than, uh, than somebody on Instagram. <laughs> but I have a story about who we follow is who we become. So on Instagram, there's this lady called Mrs. Hinch. Now, has anyone heard of Mrs. Hinch? A few of the ladies, I would expect that. So Mrs. Hinch is this woman who, just like me and you, started cleaning her house. Okay, and she was cleaning and she was putting them on her Instagram stories. Don't worry if you don't know what that is. And she basically created this massive following. And to the point now, she's, she's absolutely huge. She has, you know, millions and millions of followers just from doing what she was doing. So I started following. I got a bit obsessed. So I was watching her cleaning, you know, all the time. Oh, she, she put a new story on. To the point where I said, Jez, I'm going to Home Bargains. We're going to Home Bargains. I need to buy cleaning stuff. So I went to Home Bargains, because that's where she gets a lot of her stuff from, and I wiped the shelves, you know? So I was like, I need flash, I need this, I need this. You know, it, it cost me at least 50 quid, you know, to get all these cleaning things, but, you know, I knew what I was going to do with them. I got home, I was so excited, cleaning my house. My birthday come, Jess is like, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want a scrub daddy sponge, whatever that is. Boys, you probably don't know what that is. I want this type of sponge. I went, wasn't it, love? It got, it got a bit, it, I got a bit obsessed with it. But it's good, because the house was clean, right? Yeah. 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 
<laughs> but I could see how I was becoming who I was following, you know, even to the point of, you know, you might follow fashion, you know, we all follow fashion to an extent, don't we? But what we follow is what influences, what we watch, it influences is. Our senses are so powerful that they can determine our life. That's why God's given us senses, right? So who you surround yourself determines where you're going to go in your life. What you watch affects what you think and how you speak. When Emily, my little girl, watches YouTube, not all the time, sometimes, um, she started saying candy and trash because that's what she's watching and that's what she's hearing and that's what she's saying, you know? What are we watching, guys? What are we watching? The difference is, and here's the difference, is that we're not called to become like the world and everything in it. Do you know the world is nothing for us? It might be packaged nicely, and it might look like this stuff for us, but it's not, there's nothing, because after a while it just kind of fades away. But that's not, that's not who we are. As followers of Jesus, he's never going to fade away. He's going to stay the same. And I've got these two verses here, so I don't know if you have your Bibles, but if you would like to turn to John 15, verse 19. And do you know what? Jesus says some really radical things about loving the world. I was reading these and I was like, ooh, here's the fire. Yes. You know? Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know if I'm ready for that, God. Yeah. I love you, but I like watching Miss Hinch as well. And I like, I'm not saying these things are bad things, but I'm just saying when they control us and we're becoming like the things, not like Jesus. So, uh, Gabs, do you want to read the first one for me? The world would love you as one of its own if you belonged to it, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it is to you. So, you know that, you know, we're. We, we say that thing, we're in the world, but not of the world. We are in the world, and we need to just, you know, that's just part of life, isn't it? We're going to be doing things that the world do, but that's not our source. That's not where we draw our nutrients from, you know? Um, and then the, the next one, is anyone, not, is anyone ready for the next one? So it's 1 John 2, 15. Go on. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is Okay, so that's like, whoa, okay. Okay, Jesus, that's really radical. Let's not be like this world. Amen. We've got something far better. Amen. Amen. You know what? Fashions will come and go. Yes. Leaders will rise, leaders will fall. Amen. I think we've seen that recently. Yeah. You know, but the steadfast love of the Lord ensures forever, Amen. doesn't it? You know, let's be real. We love to watch a bit of Netflix. Anyone else like to watch a bit of Netflix or YouTube or whatever you watch? Have you ever been there and you're watching something? Oh, he's going to play the drums like his dad. <laughs> Have you ever watched something and you realise that you've grieved the Holy Spirit inside? Now you have a choice to make in that second. Do you turn it off or do you just carry on? And what I mean by that is, We've been sitting, watching something, and do you know what? I thought, oh, I'm not comfortable with that. There's too much swearing. There's too much violence. There's too much sex. Whatever that is, that has hit the point in you. It might be different to you than it is with me. And I watch it, and I go, oh, I don't know about that. Do we keep watching it? Do we watch the next episode, the next episode? I would, uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly what we turned off, but we, turn, we literally turned it off and went, I can't watch that. Because for me, it grieves me. It grieves the Holy Spirit, and God's not happy with that. But it's that, that's how we're different from the world, right? You know, you have the choice to filter what you watch. Are you listening to music that's not glorifying God? I used to do that. And you know what? It controlled my life so much. I listened to these songs, and I was becoming these songs, and it wasn't good. That was before I was saved, by the way. <laughs> But what we listen to, what we're looking at, you know, you have the power to choose that because you are choosing where your life is going. You might think, oh, it's just a five-minute thing I'm going to watch. No. No, 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 because you're so into the flesh. 
And if you keep sowing to the flesh, what's going to happen? You're going to harvest. So we sow to the spirit, we sow to the flesh. It's a decision we make in that second. But God has given us an amazing choice, isn't he? You know? So I'm just laying the foundation. So we follow, who we follow is who we become. The world has nothing for us. Jesus has got everything for us. We follow him, changes the direction of our life. So um, this next point, uh, Stu, next one. I hope this is kind of blessing you, challenging you as well. (laughs) So my next point is, as we go, we grow. Okay, because following Jesus isn't just about press the follow button, is it? You know, oh, I'm following Mrs. Hinch. She hasn't got a clue who I am, you know? But we want to grow to be like Jesus, yeah? As we're on this journey, we want to grow to be more like him. So I looked at this word, follow me. Now, for maybe Rob, Stu, maybe some other of you, you like the Greek. I like going there with the Greek words, you know? So when I looked at this word, follow, I really felt like it's got more. It's, it's got to be more unpacked than just, oh, I'm just going to follow. I'm just going to follow the leader. You know that age-old song? It's more than that. There's this Greek word, and um, hopefully there's no Greek scholars here. Um, I'll try and pronounce it for you, which is um, akolotheo, theo, okay? If you want to know how to spell that after, you want to look this up and test it, then that's fine. Akolotheo, which I looked it up, and I'm going to read you the definition. And it says this, to follow one who proceeds, which you'd expect, wouldn't you? To join him as his attendant, accompany him. To join one as a disciple, become or be his disciple, side with his party. How cool is that? So when Jesus says, follow me, he's not saying, I'll just tail behind, is he? That word, when he said it back in the day, was packed with so much meaning. And when the disciple hit, or or when the the follower heard it, he didn't hear it as, okay, I'll just passively follow you. When Jesus put that invitation out, they understood it as, come and be my assistant. Come and accompany me on the journey. Let's share heart. Let's share life together. Let's walk together. Let's talk together. It was an intimate call. It's not just a follow button, guys, where we just go, okay, Jesus. I put my hand up, I'm going to follow you, it's more than that. It's an intimate call to walk with him every single day. Uh, we've got a bit of a story. So when we like to go on holiday, my, we like to take my mum and my father-in-law with us. And we go in separate cars because we have two children and the car is ram-packed full. We can't even see out the back. They go in their cars. So my mum goes, I can't even remember where we're going. It's when we kind of started going places with the kids. My mum goes, I don't know where I'm going. Okay, so what, what, what would you say to that? How, how, would you, how would you, you know, what would you say to her? I don't know where I'm going, what would you say back to her? How are you going to get there? No? No? Follow me. Yeah? It's all right, mum. We'll meet you on the A470, just by that pull in by Castle Cork. We'll meet you there. You can follow me and Jazz down. Great, brilliant. Yeah? So, car's packed ring each other, okay, I've left, okay, I've left, brilliant. So you get to the point, we we reach by Castle Cork, fantastic. Okay, you follow us down now, yeah, brilliant, no problem. It's not gonna happen, is it, let's be honest. You go, you're traveling two hours away, are you really gonna follow tail by tail? So we're going the national speed limit, you know. Where are they? Josh is going, where's Nanny, where's Nanny? Okay, love, she's not even in the rear mirror. Where are they? They don't know where they're going. So I go, Jess, shall I ring them? Yeah, 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 ring them. You can't communicate. You're in two separate cars. There's no fellowship going on, is there? You're just literally following. So I ring them. Mum, where are you? Oh, we, 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 we just stopped off at the services. You know, we, we just want to get coffee. Yeah, but you don't know where you're going, Mum. Oh, what were we meant to do? Why didn't you phone me? Why didn't you tell me? Oh, okay, all right, we'll just, you pull into the next wherever you go, and we'll, we'll catch you, you know? Anyway, I think we ended up following each other on, oh, it was a nightmare. So from now on, we go, we'll meet you there. <laughs> Put it in the sat-nav, we'll meet you there, I'm not following, you, you can't follow me anymore. But you know what it's like, 
One car comes in front, another car comes, you then can't see each other. You get where I'm going with this, okay? When you're following Jesus, if you're just doing the like, if you're just doing the follow button and you're just following him and he's going like this, it's not going to happen, guys. Because distraction come in, distraction come in, accident ahead. Jesus, I can't see you anymore. I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. Help me. That's not what it's like to be a follower of Jesus. Because really what he says is this. Come with me. Don't go in a separate car. When you want to go on a journey, come with me. Come and sit in the passenger seat. Let's go together. How many of you have been on a road trip? Yeah, a road trip is far more fun than someone following you in the back of the car, right? You know, in the car down there. Let's bring some food together. Let's have a road trip, you know? And that's what it's like with Jesus. He wants to be in that seat with you. He says, come, come and have a relationship with me. Come and walk with me. I don't want you to follow behind. I want you to be close with me. And then the the scriptures, Stu, I'll just read this one because we've got uh, someone else to do as well. He doesn't want you to watch from afar. He wants you to be vitally engaged in what he is doing. Come close. Join him in partnership. Mission together. There's nothing passive about being a follower. So it says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1 9, God will do this, for he is faithful to do what he says, and he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus our Lord. Just amazing that he wants to be on this journey with us, right? So like Jez was saying about these, because you might think, oh, this is really airy-fairy, Kate. Well, the rubber's going to hit the road in a minute. (laughs) But even those groups we were mentioning, actively involved, guys. You are not going to grow on the outskirts of of the church life. You are going to grow when you've been stuck in, when you're meeting with people. I could go on and on. But I won't. So we're going to watch um, a little video. So Stuart said that I have to ad lib a little bit now while he gets the video ready. But I'm just going to give you a little bit of background. So this video, if you've watched The Chosen, you would recognize this. But it's a short clip where Jesus calls Matthew. And basically Matthew, for those that don't know, was not very liked with his his fellow Jews, okay? He was a tax collector. Um, They felt betrayed by him. He had it good. He was protected by the Roman guards. He had a good life. He had a lot of money. On paper, he had it good, okay? But this video is just absolutely fantastic. I don't think we can turn those kind of main lights off, can we? And it's this moment, it's so beautifully done, this moment where he calls in the same world, Matthew. Next. Besides, what else are you going to do with a mind like yours? Matthew. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. What are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to you. What are you doing? Where do you think you're going? Guys, let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're gonna throw it all away. Yes. I 
I don't get it. You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector. Get used to different. I'm glad we passed by your booth today, Matthew. Yes. Shall we? We have a celebration to prepare for. You will regret this, Matthew. What's the tablet for? I grabbed it without thinking. You can put it back. No, no, keep it. You may yet find use for it. Where are we going? A dinner party. I'm not welcome at dinner parties. Well, that's not going to be a problem tonight. You're the host. I just love it when he's like, you know, he calls you. So he's like, follow me, you know? And do you remember that point, you know, when God says, follow me? And you're almost a bit like, uh, you're talking to me, you know? You're talking to me. And God knows everything about us, doesn't he? You know? But what, I, what, what kind of stuck out to me as I was watching this is this common cycle that happens when God tells us to do something or speaks to us, um, and it's this. So God calls you. God tells you to do something. Initially, you say yes. Then the doubts kick in. So some of the words he was saying, what are you doing? Where do you think you're going? Have you lost your mind you're going to throw it all away. You've got money. You've got protection. You got it good. Why throw it all away? You're going to you're going to regret this decision. Have you heard that those voices before? Have you heard people and yourself thinking that before? Let me give you some examples. I was just out of uni and I got a job. It was quite a good job uh, working with mortgages, and God said, "Buy a house." Okay, God. I'd like to buy a house. Yeah, I'll buy a house. Down the line. You can't afford that. How are you going to pay a mortgage? Who do you think you are? You're only young. How can you buy a house? You haven't just come out of uni. Shut up. <laughs> in a way, be quiet. I'm going to buy a house because that's what God's told me to do. Bought the house in Kefili. We've, we've been there for 15 years. God's blessed us. The blessing of God has followed us. Here's another one. So I worked in this mortgage company. God says, and I'm sometimes earning four or five grand a month. God says, leave it. I want you to go to Bible school. Okay, God. That wasn't an easy decision, but eventually I got there. Okay, God, I'll tell my employers I'm leaving. What are you doing? You've just bought a house. How can you afford the mortgage now? You won't have any income. We'll give you more money. We'll give you more responsibilities. Just stay. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe I should do that. No, no, be quiet. I'm moving forward. I'm growing. It's in, the, it's in the going that we grow. It's all these decisions when I say yes to God, quiet down those voices, it's then I grow. Okay, I'll give you another one. God says, I want you to marry this man. <laughs> I'm just being honest because these are, these are the voices, you know? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I want to marry. This is the man, this is the man. It'll never work. Your mum got divorced. Your, dad, your, your nan got divorced. Never make it work. You're not good enough to be married. You'll never make it as a wife. Three weeks before the wedding, I sat down in a pub down by Thornhill. I said, I want to call it all off. God's, you know, voices, there's somebody else better for you. He's not the one for you. If I'd acted on those voices, I wouldn't be here right now. I certainly wouldn't be here, and you wouldn't be here right now either. You shut those voices out. I'm not going to listen to you, because this is what God said. Adam and Eve, come on, this is, this is not new stuff, guys. This was back in the beginning, the first conversation Adam and Eve ever had with the devil. You know, did God really say that? You know, it's age old, and yet we still play into it, right? We play into it. Here's another one. God said you're going to have two children. You're going to call them Joshua and Emily. This is way, we just got married. You're going to call them Joshua and Emily. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, we want to be parents. Of course we do. You know, yes. I've always wanted to be a mother. Yes, I'm going to. It wasn't happening. It wasn't working out. Year of trying. Nothing. Get an appointment with gynecology. Oh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll put you on um, 
put your microcarnum, not microcarnum, was it, Clomid, to help you um, ovulate. Went to the appointment to get the pills. I said, I'm pregnant. She said, that's not possible. You didn't ovulate this month. I said, well, it is possible because I'm pregnant. <laughs> and God said, you're going to call him Joshua. And then Emily, my daughter, she followed. But, you know, with every decision that God puts in front of you, there's always the voices. There's always the fear. It's not going anywhere. And in fact, if it wasn't there, I'd question you whether it was God's voice. Because the devil doesn't care about a decision that's not going to affect the rest of your life. Okay? God says, do this. Okay, God. But I've got fear. I'm worried. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. Choose someone else. It's not me, God. Do you know what? You've just stunted your growth. You're not going to grow. So what you say is, yes, Lord. I can't see the path ahead. That's okay. I'm with you. Remember, I'm in the car with you. It's fine. You don't know where you're going, but I do. God, but, 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 but I'm not good enough. It doesn't matter because it's my strength in you. Every decision that's put in front of you, if it's from God, it's going to potentially look impossible. But do you know what? It's a cycle, guys. You've got to see it for what it is. We want to grow in God, right? All of us, we want to grow in God. And we need to take these decisions. We need to say yes to God. Silence the voice of the enemy, as scary as they may be. They've got nothing on you. Like Matthew did back in that thing. He gave him the key. He said, I don't want to serve your kingdom anymore. I've got another one to serve. You know? He didn't, he didn't know Jesus. Imagine someone just walked in here right now and was like, oh, Kate, follow me. Yeah. Jess would be like, oh, hold on a minute. Yeah. You're not going anywhere, you know? It was, he saw something in Jesus, right. didn't he? You know? And when we see something in Jesus, we see a trust in him, right? Then we can trust him with our lives. We can trust him with those steps. We can trust him with those decisions because he's not going to let us down. And we're going to come to a close in a minute. So, um, I've got so many notes flying everywhere. <laughs> I'm just going to give you um, a little sum up and then I'm going to pray for two, two types of situations, okay? So, in conclusion, this journey we're on, guys, is wonderful. You know what? Whether you are at the beginning of that journey with Jesus or whether you've been journeying with Jesus for many, many miles, it's a wonderful journey, you know? And when we spend time with him and we put him in the front seat and we're spending time, we're going to be growing in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. You know, those are just really practical areas. And I think we were saying well, that's another preach in itself on how we can grow and be changed in the fruits of the Spirit. But when... You know, you show unconditional love to a stranger. Whoa. You know? When your patience is enduring on the schoolyard and your kids are kicking off, okay, you're standing out now. When you turn that program off, that offends the Holy Spirit. I could go on and on. So I'm going to pray for two, two types of people. One, if you have never been called by Jesus before, there's a call to Jesus right now that says, follow me. So that's the first call. If you don't know Jesus, we're going to put an appeal out there. And you can respond by just putting your hand up and down to say, I want to follow you, Lord. And then the second one is, is that you've got a situation in front of you. God has asked you to do something. You've said yes, but the fear is taking over. The doubts are creeping in. You've got those thoughts and you just need a little bit of help and a little bit of prayer, and a little bit of faith to say no. Then we're going to pray for you this morning as well. So should we all just bow our heads?